Here is a 2023 Range Rover Sport SE in Carpathian Gray over light cloud and ebony perforated ultra fabric interior, which is the vegan interior. And this is an upgrade plus this color. And it's all new for 2023. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides. It's 50% more rigid. It's going to start off with 8.5 inches of clearance. It goes up to 11 inches because this is air suspension. Premium LED headlights and daytime runners. Runnings. This is all reworked and this underneath it is to wash the headlamp assembly with the new grill and I like how the hood goes over the fenders to keep more of a simplified look. That's what Range Rover is doing nowadays. You get the gloss black elements that's going to be on the side air pocket with front parking sensors and a 360 degree reverse camera plus your off-road camera in which you can forward through water at over 35 inches with this. Now this is the Sport, so I don't know if you would be doing that at near $100,000 price, but in the same aspect, a lot of people like their toys. But if you need more power for 24, they're gonna have a BMW source 4.4 liter V8 housed underneath here. What we have in this is a 3.0 liter turbocharged, supercharged six cylinder with 355 horsepower and 365 pound feet of torque paired to a ZF eight speed automatic transmission. I know it's a lot to swallow because this is also a mild hybrid engine, which means when you start this vehicle, you'll hear the electronic start first and then the engine will engage and you'll come to the start stop whenever you're going to a light, a little bit more smooth. It also will increase your MPGs by a touch. But let's face it, this is a Range Rover Sport. You're spending a hundred grand, you're not concerned about getting 19 MPGs for the city and 26 MPGs for the highway. You're looking for a sporty drive. You're gonna get it with this. A zero to 60 at 2.99, I'm just playing. 5.7 seconds. Now sport, it doesn't mean it's gonna be a 50-50 weight distribution, but the top speed is pretty impressive. 140 miles per hour. This is a box on wheels, but it is one of the most athletic boxes on wheels that you can option. And they put some of the aerodynamics starting with the dual shark fin antennas because you get the air that's gonna flux between it and on the sides. So I like that they have thought about aerodynamics for the top so you can get those quick speeds with the sport. It's actually there because of the GPS and for your Sirius XM and radio. And what's a Rover Sport without increasing the wheel size to these 22 inch multi-spoke alloy wheels? We even have the spare tire that's tucked in the cargo, which you'll see in just a second. It's an extra $500 to do that because of these upgraded wheels. And you can go up to 23 inches. Rear axle steering, which will help give more of that 50-50 weight distribution because the wheelbase has in, been increased and the length from the prior gen. Towing over 7,700 pounds. Add the crossbars and the roof rails, over 220 pounds. The rear is going to have reworked taillights. It's more sleek and more simplified with the Range Rover across the center. The lower gets the gloss black and the dual exhaust outlets. The BMW source engine is going to be on the SV next year or for the 2024 model where we're not gonna have an SVR next year. Reverse sensors and a 360 degree reverse camera. So it does make the maneuverability for reversing a lot easier and you can option a digital rear view mirror, which when you put that, it gives you basically 180 degrees for the back. So then you don't really have any blind spots. And because of the way the third window is, it just makes it look a lot longer, but keeping a sporty style because of the way it picks up into the back. Power lift gate going into 31.9 cubic feet of storage underneath the floor. You're gonna get that large spare tire. The privacy cover, bag holders, LED interior lights, which you would expect that, 12 volt charger. And the best part is you can lower and raise the suspension in the back by the push of a button. So it makes the availability of the cargo even better. And look how low that goes. And it's not much of an opening, so you're not gonna have to worry to scratch because you have this plastic here. Split fold the rear bench in the back electronically at a 60-40 split. Having a little bit of issues here with the 40. 
This is what happens with electronics. Sometimes you just got to play with them. It's going to increase the cargo to 71.1 cubic feet. We need to go inside and start up this P360 so you can hear that exhaust. <laughs> Soft closed doors to start off with. Light cloud ebony perforated ultra cloth interior, which is more or less a synthetic leather. 20 way power seat adjustment that includes the headrest. Heated and ventilated memory for both the front occupants. Headroom and leg room. The Range Rover Sports, they're a wide vehicle. So you're gonna have a lot of the width in the footwell area. Two-tone for the dash with the veneers that's going to separate in between it. This does not have a heads-up display. Meridian sound system with auto-dimming rear view mirror and a pano moonroof with the leather strip that's going to be on all of the grab handles. 13.7 inch gauge cluster and a 13.1 inch touchscreen center cluster Pivi Pro, which has Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio. Yeah, for the weighting sensing, which will show you how deep you can go, click onto those four dots. You could do for trailering, and I like that you have the vehicle dimensions because this will show you the height and the width. So when you're driving into a parking garage, because this is an air suspension, you can see what's going on. To click and activate anything there, and for the navigation, dual climate control settings, and these are multi-function. So when you push it, heat it, ventilated, pull it. It's going to go back to standard in which when you pull again now you can change the fan speed it's on auto now push this up and now we can change the suspension so we can do all that when you go into the gauge cluster you can see a little display behind the vehicle of what those modes will do more or less so i like that they're doing the ford bronco touches here I'm going to leave it in dynamics for later. Push it in and it'll just stay as auto. This is turn on the audio sound system and you have your palm holder for the gear lever, the push button start, and the gloss black elements. QI wireless charger, where did they put it? Well, when you open this up, it's going to have cup holders. Slide this, look how deep it is. Here's the key fob. I put it there purposely so you can see how deep it is with USB ports. But no 12 volt? Well, here's the QI wireless charger underneath the Pivi Pro. And then underneath here, you have a pass-through. Steering wheel is going to have multi-functions with the adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, and the paddle shifts, and also multi-functionality. So when you click onto that, you can change the whole display layout so you can have it on focus. You can have it with the large map. It's a little bit more slower response. You can go into the dials whenever I... There we go. And each one you can configure also. So whenever you're going on to the panel layout, you can change this for your audio sound system, any information for the driver, and it resets back to your navigation. The door panel and the dash integrating together with the veneers, and you're gonna have the carpet that's going to be found into the center. It's gonna be a little bit more soft here eight power seat adjustments and the rest is going to be through the pivi pro a medium-sized storage pocket and i like the gloss black elements instead of having the exposed screws like they do in the defender because it just makes this a little bit more sporty it's going to be more sporty here that opens up into a storage pocket that's pretty deep you can option a refrigerator that can fit four 16.9 ounce bottles and this also can adjust and you just lock it in so you have more of an armrest and you don't have to just use this for the back seat's headroom and leg room with a touch of storage behind both of the front seat's backs. Heated ventilated seats, air vents, USB ports, and a 12 volt is gonna be down here. Armrest with cup holders and a storage pocket and it's gonna be about the same material as the front. The nice thing here though is you have power seats. They are two ways, so back and forward. It's not as refined as the front, meaning the sound that it makes. Door panel is gonna have the same material, so you get the Meridian sound system that's inside the carpeting. 
And I like that they keep the same materials because the gloss black just makes it look more sporty. It's a smaller storage pocket sliding into the center. The floor is not completely flat, but you have your own feet space. But in shoulder space is not really compromised because this is a long and wide vehicle. Headroom is going to be the same with the seats positioned back and because we have a pano. 3.0 liter, six cylinder turbocharged, supercharged, 355 horsepower, 365 pound-feet of torque. ZF eight-speed automatic transmission is bulletproof. The engine is good too because you have a lot of power underneath it, zero to 60 is under six seconds. Top speed, 140 miles per hour for a box on wheels that doesn't really have a lot of aerodynamics. And this is electronic air suspension so you can get 11.5 inches of clearance and over 35 inches fording through water. Range Rover does an excellent job. When you're getting into the sport, it's obviously more sporty. You're gonna hear some of the exhaust. I have it in dynamic, so that way we can kind of play with it, use the paddle shifters and see how it is. The gauge cluster, the way it is designed, it's pivoted more towards the windscreen, which I like because I can actually see how fast I'm going in the RPMs because where I put the steering wheel, I can't see it otherwise. The auto start stop is good, but mixed with the auto hold, is a little bit more questionable, especially when you are using the auto start stop and it's going to be doing that a lot more so. That's the way these vehicles engage to get you a little bit better MPGs. It's not a huge difference, but what I dislike about it is if you're on a hill and you let go of the brake, you're on the auto start stop. You push the gas pedal, it turns it on, but you're still on auto hold. So you gotta tap it twice in order for the car to be engaged. And there is a lot of traffic. So unfortunately, we're not gonna show the performance right now, but we will just dive into the pros and cons. Starting off with what I like. The refresh is great in the sense of it's more smooth, it's more quiet. The sound deadening, they went crazy. They have speakers in the wheel wells to make the car as soundproof as possible. They have it in the headrest. They have it in the headliner. They've just put sound deadening materials everywhere and it goes through the Meridian sound system to help offset any road noise because you can option 23 inch wheels. We got 22 inch wheels, they're humongous and you barely feel any imperfections. Now, when you're talking about the seats, is it a pro or a con? For me, I'm not a huge fan of this vegan leather thing that's going on because it's just synthetic leather with a fancy name to it. However, it's really soft, but even going into a Range Rover Sport without it, it's soft. This is an upgraded price too. So if you don't want the leather, you're gonna have to fork it out. And another pro is we have the turbocharge with the supercharge and the mild hybrid technology, which means you're gonna have a little bit less turbo lag in which, look at this. You can maneuver the vehicle. And again, this is a big car. The best thing though that I have found with the Range Rover Sport, and you're probably gonna say, that's not really the best feature. The 360 degree reverse camera, I can still use it while I'm driving. That will take me to some cons in which you saw there's a lot of electronics in the vehicle in which the back seat couldn't recline at that 40 split, which you saw in the interior. So things can happen because there is a lot of electronics in the Range Rover Sport. I'm gonna check the turn radius. I'm pulling up just a touch because even with the rear steering, I'm assuming it's gonna still be around two and a half lanes in which I only got two lanes and a bike lane, but let's see what we got. And are we gonna scuff those wheels? No, we're not. And because we have power, let's see how it goes. It'll put a smile on your face because the exhaust filters in. Some other cons is it doesn't have standard heads up display in which when you're at a hundred thousand dollar price point, I'd like to see that. I have it in my infinity and that's a 70 grand vehicle. The infotainment screen has everything more or less derived. I like that the climate control is separated so that way you can just kind of touch and feel because of the palm holder. It's right in front of the climate control for the driver so it makes it easier. But to turn on the stereo, you have to kind of move your hand back if you're tall. And then for the seat settings, most of it is actually in the 
infotainment screen, which you're going to be taking your eyes off the road multiple times in order to configure and make it as comfortable as possible. Audi does the same thing. BMW is also going that route because it gives a more minimal look with buttons. However, the buttons are easier because I don't have to look off the road. So stop doing this. But the one huge problem that I have is you have to option these features in which to make it quiet. What I mean by that, the side windows are not going to be acoustic unless you pay extra. You're not going to get fog lights. You're not going to get that synthetic leather on the steering wheel. You got to pay extra. Same thing for the seating. I mean, when you start thinking about this, why would I want to pay extra for synthetic when I can get leather? Because there's police everywhere, we're not going to go too crazy. Unfortunately, I would option the vehicle as it is spec like this if I was going for the P360 because it's so quiet and refined. The wheels, I mean, I have 22 inch wheels on mine, so I'm fine with it. 21 inch comes standard. I like that we have actual metal paddle shifts too, because when you get into some variants of Land Rover, it's not going to have it. It's going to be plastic. So really just the materials that's used, the fact that they have configured this car from ground up and kept most of the characteristics, just making it better with technology, safety and capabilities going against rivals. If you're optioning a BMW X7, I like that you have the theater screen option and the screen layout is a little bit more easier to use because it's just more in your face. It's gonna feel a little bit more sporty. Here, it's gonna feel a little bit more classy. But I don't feel you'll go wrong either way. I mean, I've driven the M60i and it just goes crazy with power. And the fact that they're using a BMW sourced engine for the SV shows that BMW makes a really powerful variant and you have just as much capabilities. You're not going to be fording through water in that, but it actually has a near 50-50 weight distribution. And they also have the rear steering that goes to about five degrees just like this. So when you're looking at these longer vehicles, you don't really have to be concerned about tight positions or going up and off on the interstate because the car is going to turn for you a lot easier even if there's a little weight to the steering. Comparing against Mercedes-Benz, it's going to be the most expensive whenever you're looking at any AMG. We have it in Dynamics. I have it in S1, which means I can engage with the paddles. It's not going to change the gears for me. And then I'll show you about the turbos or the turbo. It's, it's quick. For every day in and out, it's quick. It's not fast like an M60i, but it can stick with an X7. And this is what I mean by the turbo lag. See, it's a little bit more refined and seamless when you get the mild hybrid technology. So it does make it more easy for that everyday use in the sense of you don't feel like it's stalling out for you if you have to mash on the gas at any given point. And even though it's long and wide, it feels fine. Turn on the lane keeping assist and it will just push you on into the lane. It's not something that's so excessive, so it's not gonna feel like a truck, but because you are lifted up, you will have a different feel, but it's still so smooth. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise, website, and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank Land Rover Tampa for giving us this 2023 Range Rover Sport for our car review.